Hey everyone, and on today's episode of Pinch Al's Garage, we're going to learn how to install an OptiWorks rear uh, Votex bumper. And then if I have enough time today, we're going to learn how to install a Bora R front bumper on a Mark IV Jetta. Now this Jetta is actually the car that we've been building uh, for quite a while. This is actually called the Patreon built uh, VR6 Jetta. So let's get to work because this is uh, Pinch Al's Garage. Now for installing your bumper, we learned, we got to learn how to remove it. Uh, we have to learn how to remove the factory rear bumper and it's super, super simple. It's just a little time consuming, that's all. All right, step one, take the wheels off. Make sure the car is on jack stands. Step two, on the inside fender liner, there's one, two, three uh, T25 torxes on the left and the right side of the car. And then we make our way over to the rear. The tail lights have to come out. No matter what, tail lights need to come out. They're held together by three eight millimeter uh, nuts. Now the issue with that is that you are gonna have to make sure your trunk is more empty than this, all right? Because this is kind of the pain in the butt portion. Uh, first, you're gonna need to take off this trim right here. You just pull up and pull out. And so you kind of like pull it up like this and pull out that way. Uh, just be careful. And then inside here, this little cover, you're gonna pull it down and then you're gonna find the three bolts. Uh, you'll see here, one, two, and three. That's all that holds the entire tail light assembly on both sides. Same thing on this side. One, two, and three. Make sure you use uh, the smallest ratchet you can, you can get with the eight millimeter uh, six point or 12 point like this one um, because you need the most amount of space possible to reach in there and get those uh, nuts out. Once you pop them out, then the two extra bolts are exposed here. Now in my car, this, is, this bumper has been removed more than once. So we're missing two pieces of the, the puzzle here. So number one, there's usually a little stopper here and then there's a bolt. These bolts look exactly like the ones that are used to hold the front bumper in place. Very, very common. So those come out, but this one, usually you need like a two fly heads or like a wire cutter, and you grab them and you pull straight up to pop it out. And same goes over here. Once you do that, the bumper is ready to be pulled off. All right, so now we're gonna pull the bumper off. Oh wait, it's factory. I'm not used to that. <laughs> There's uh, a couple other torches underneath at the bottom. One right here. And there's supposed to be three, but there's one missing.
right back. I need to grab a wire cutter. This guy installed the hitch. So now, the bumper should pop right off. Go like that. There you go. It's a really clean reflex over bumper. Move it over here. So, during your installation of your new bumper, make sure you have all your main surface areas cleaned out so things slide in nicely. Now, since it is an aftermarket bumper, it's not going to have all the factory stuff. So you really have to focus on what makes the bumper hold in place correctly. Number one, these are the bumper guides right here. This is what tells the bumper where to line up on the back portion of the car. Towards the quarter panel here, they have the rest of the guide right here. You see, this right here. This helps the bumper line up to the quarter panel. So what we have to focus on is making sure that these, this portion, this portion, all the way across and over here line up and work together in harmony now you'll see here like these little uh, things right here none of this matters too much for holding the bumper in place as you can see there's not much that does that guides the bumper besides these all this does is just kind of keeps the bumper up and lined up to the I guess to the body of the car. So we don't need to focus on that as much. Primarily, this guide and the quarter panel section. So let me show you guys what I mean. So the bumper is on, but it barely fits. And we can show you why. Um, everything fits here where it matters. But then you'll see here, we gotta dig in just about a millimeter or two on this side. And the same thing here. Got to dig in about a millimeter or two down this way. So we got to get a Dremel and with the sanding wheel, we sand that down a little bit. Then we work our way over here and you'll see right off the bat, that's where our next spot is where we're, um, we're hitting, is right on the little uh, tab there. Now that tab, looks like we're probably going to have to grind it down just the corner of it to see if that improves our uh, mounting position. And it's going to be the same way on both sides. So you're always going to, you're going to sand, uh, repair, I mean sand down, uh, fit, sand down, fit until you get the fitment that you're looking for. Once you do that, then you start making your holes to hold the bumper in place. And then you make your holes on the side to use the fender liner to hold the, the pretty much this bumper over here on our yeah hold the bumper on this side about 20 minutes of playing around with the bumper um finally got it on correctly um do be careful when putting your bumpers on because if you don't pay attention you will scratch your car um so we got the fitment pretty much on point here where it's supposed to be on the um I guess the backing of the trunk, uh, it goes in. Please remember, when you put your bumper on, center it first, make sure the trunk closes all the way and doesn't hit the left or the right side. Uh, I did notice it, uh, that it hit it on the right side, just a tad, um, but I was able to just smack it a couple times over here and it centered itself. Um, and now the trunk closes correctly and nothing touches over here. It, it's like super close. I mean, like it is super close. I mean, it's, it's very, very close, but it's not hitting. So I opened the trunk up uh, and it didn't hit at all. So I'm pretty content with that. Uh, so the next step here is to get this part of the bumper on point. You'll see there's a gap. Now, there's a part right here. Uh, it's a little square, it's a little plastic square that sticks out. You need to grind that down a little bit until it stops preventing the bumper from uh, going in. And you'll see here, once I get it in there, it lines up. But you gotta 
You gotta grind a little bit on the inside and then I'll let you push it in to make it line up correctly. Now, the only issue that I fall across with these bumpers, and this has been pretty much an issue across the board whenever I uh, work with these bumpers, is getting this top piece as tight as I can so it doesn't pop out or look like this, have that fat gap. Um, it's Again, it's one of those things, it's the nature of fiberglass. You can make fiberglass look OEM if you spend the time, the patience, and all the care for it in the world, which we're gonna try to do uh, to get the fitment on point. But like on this side, this side actually is, uh, you'll see, not much effort to get it pushed in, and if I put if I push up on down here, it fits beautifully. So this side is probably going to be the less problematic side for me right now. It's the passenger side that's going to give me the biggest headache. Um, if you see right here, right there, there's that little little square right here, the little square that this holds onto. That's a square that you need to uh, grind down the edge of it so it doesn't hit it, so you can push it in and get it all squared away. Um, I ended up grinding down just a little bit right here, trimming just a bit of the fender liner here so it kind of passes a little bit nicer and cleaner inside here. You guys can see that. Just a little bit, probably about a millimeter or maybe two tops. Um, again, didn't do a lot just because I wanted to, uh, this to fit as nice as possible. And then once you do that, you have to pull in this side. See, when you pull in this, this tightens up even more. And then you're gonna push up. Um, there has to be a way that we can uh, probably gonna get a little jack with maybe like a, a couple rags underneath it and kind of push it up and have someone push against over here while we line everything up and then screw everything in place. Uh, that way we can get it to fit very, very nice. Uh, once we get the fitment correct, uh, we go over here and then you start drilling holes for holding the bumper in place. If you do the holes first and then you start doing the alignment over there, you're gonna mess up completely. Uh, you're gonna end up drilling too many holes over here or the hole is too big, which in turn will cause the bumper to pretty much shift over time and kind of giving you issues. So do not drill the top holes yet until you get the front orientation set. Once you have those holes done, all right, once you get that orientation done, then you drill your top holes, then you drill your bottom holes, and then you drill your uh, ones over here. Because the bottom holes, the ones that sit underneath the belly pan, I mean not the belly pan, but the, the um, I guess the bottom of the car, will push this up for you somewhat and give you the ability to line this up even better so the fitment stays a little bit more on point. But yeah, that is pretty much the procedure for doing the um, the OptiWorks bumpers on the rear. Again, I spent a total of maybe 30 to 40 minutes getting to fit pretty much the way it fits right now, which is not perfect, but it's pretty dang close. Just a little bit more work, and it should it should look very very good. Um, and then we're going to work on the OptiWorks uh, um, our, uh, Bora R front bumper next uh, when we actually get some sunlight because it is very cloudy right now. Uh, I think it's going to rain in a little bit. So I'm going to get everything buttoned back up and be ready.